Before he killed himself, gunman Jivali Wong shot 13 people to death and wounded four others. Most of the victims were from other countries, taking an English class at the American Civic Association. The teacher, 72-year-old Roberta Bobby King of Binghamton, was a mother of 10. Also killed 60-year-old Maria Zabnu of Binghamton, a caseworker at the ACA. 53-year-old Dolores Yegal lived in Binghamton. She came from the Philippines after meeting the man who would become her husband. 47-year-old Li Gao came to the U.S. from China last summer. She lived in Binghamton and was a visiting scholar at Binghamton University. 35-year-old Hong Shu Mao Marsland also came from China and settled in Green with her husband. 57-year-old Layla Khalil came with her family from Iraq just seven months ago and also lived in Binghamton. 26-year-old Parveen Ninali came from Pakistan and lived in Binghamton. 43-year-old Almir Alves was from Brazil. 44-year-old Mark Henry Bernard and his wife, 46-year-old Maria Sonia Bernard, were from Haiti. They lived in Endicott, worked at McDonald's, and they leave two children. 39-year-old Lon Ho came to Binghamton from Vietnam. She worked at Nail Tricks at the Oakdale Mall. She died in the arms of her husband, Long Nguyen, who survived the shooting. 54-year-old Hai Hong Zhang of Endwell and 22-year-old Zhang Ling of Endicott also came from China and both had hoped to attend Broom Community College. Some of the victims have already been laid to rest. Other families are waiting for relatives to come to the U.S. for funerals. The Southern Tier Islamic Organization hosted a Muslim service for Parveen Nin Ali and Layla Khalil. Khalil's 17-year-old son said the family came looking for a better life in a peaceful place. Ali's brother said she held the family together. I lose my love at 17 years old. I'm 17. I use my love, my mother, my emotion, mother emotion. She was like a parent. She was like a friend. She was a, she was a teacher. She was a facilitator who always like pushed me to go through school, to go to college. Ali was working on her GED and wanted to become a teacher. Khalil was a librarian in Iraq and hoped to continue sharing her love of books in America. Friends of Roberta Bobby King say that she loved teaching at the American Civic Association because the students loved to learn. They say she died doing what she loved, helping people. Hundreds of people turned out to pay their respects at Temple Concord on Riverside Drive in Binghamton. King was also an avid doll collector. She loaned some to MacArthur Elementary School in Binghamton where she was a substitute teacher. It's like a ray of sunshine that I still can't believe is gone. I saw her every month, once a month, for seven years. King was also involved with Temple Concord's Hanukkah House, the Robertson Museum, and Phelps Mansion. Maria Zabnu was called in to help work at the American Civic Association last Friday. She leaves a husband and four children. It's hard to accept that uh, Maria, who uh, could do so much and has done so much, cannot come back. Maria worked as an immigration counselor. She came with her family from Ukraine when she was just a girl. Friends say she was involved in many activities at Sacred Heart Ukrainian Catholic Church in Johnson City, where the funeral service was held Wednesday. The only thing that we can all say is to hopefully be able to take a small piece of that and try to, try to emulate it in our daily lives and to help those around us the way that she did. Friends say that should be Zabnu's legacy. Lee Gao wanted to improve her English. Friends at Binghamton University say Gao was at the ACA every morning, Monday through Friday. She came from China and began working with the BU Department of Public Administration last August. Tom Sinclair says Lee was an eager learner. She was just a vivacious, energetic, upbeat person. I mean, you just, um, she bounced into rooms and she, uh, she was always smiling and she was, smart as can be, um, just energetic. And Elmir Alves of Brazil was also a visiting scholar at Binghamton University. BU has more than 2,000 international students. Lan Ho and her husband came to the U.S. two years ago. She was known as Helen to her customers here at Nail Tricks in the Oakdale Mall in Johnson City. Their friend and manager, Min Nguyen, hired her about seven months ago. Helen's husband, Long Huyen, was with her Friday at the American Civic Association. He tried to shape her, he knees down and hold her, and the third shot, they shot him in the elbow and go through her, and he said he knows she died right away. 
Wynn is recovering at Wilson Hospital, but was able to attend a service for his wife Thursday. The couple's nine-year-old daughter and 11-year-old son are staying with a relative. Hong Shumao married her husband David Marsland less than a year ago. They met in 2007 and she was working toward becoming an American citizen. While many in green knew David well, they were just getting to know Hong. He was a big supporter in his work in music. More than 100 people came out to support Marsland at Hong's funeral at Zion Episcopal Church. The shooting left another two children without parents. A trust fund's been set up for the children of Mark and Maria Bernard. If you'd like to make a contribution, make a check payable to Bernard Children Trust. You can mail it to NBT Bank Trust Department, 3121 Vestal Parkway East, Vestal, New York, 13850. The Bernards worked at McDonald's. The company says they will be missed by all who knew and worked with them. Of all the questions during last week, one that escapes certain answer is why. Why did he do it? Gunman Jeverly Wong unleashed a barrage of bullets. You'll learn more about him when our special Tragedy and Tribute returns. Police say 41-year-old Jiverly Wong is the gunman who unleashed the violence inside the American Civic Association. The town of Union Man shot and killed 13 people and wounded four before taking his own life. He admitted his intentions in a letter mailed to a local news station. Action News reporter Eric Burling tells us why Wong's actions tell the tale of a troubled man. With a handgun pointed in the air and a mission on his mind, 41-year-old Jiverly Wong smiles for the camera. He mailed these photos of himself along with a rambling handwritten letter to News 10 Now. In the letter, he blames police for years of harassment, both in California where he once lived and here in the Binghamton area. Wong writes, I am Jiverly Wong, shooting the people. He tried to explain, I cannot accept my poor life, but before I cut my poor life, he wrote he intended to take at least two people with me. Police say he was no stranger to the American Civic Association. He was taking classes before dropping out in March. We picked up that he was, apparently people were making fun of him. He felt that he was being degraded because from what we get is his inability to speak English. Wong had also recently been laid off from his job at ShopVac in Endicott. Police won't speculate if all this was enough to ignite Wong's senseless fury, enough to kill 13 innocent victims and then take his own life. The letter he wrote was dated March 18th, more than two weeks ago, which shows he was planning his rampage for some time. It was postmarked Friday, the same day as the shootings. Sandra Livingston was an acquaintance of his. He never showed me any type of violent behavior. He never acted aggressive toward me. I wish I could say I understand why he would do something like this or that he, you know, it just doesn't make any sense to me. Police Chief Sikoski says Wong, responsible for one of Binghamton's darkest days, was an avid gun user and a member of the Kirkwood Gun Club. From the people close to him, that what these actions that he took was not a surprise to them. Actions that were no surprise, but ended with a deadly, devastating result. Eric Burling, WBNG-TV, Action News. Binghamton police say Wong is Vietnamese with Chinese heritage. He originally came to the area in the late 1980s. He moved to California for a time where he was married, then divorced. Wong became a naturalized citizen in 1995. Police believe Wong returned to the Binghamton area in August of 2007. He lived with his parents in the town of Union. Four people shot by Wong survived their injuries. Describe her as a hero, as a hero. She was very helpful to us. Police believe Shirley Delucia's actions may have helped end the gunman's plan to take more lives. Others escaped the initial horror, but spent hours in hiding, and we'll hear their stories of wait and worry next.